Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take all of this out of this. Let's get started. Once the owner saw what was involved in swapping out the tank, he brought it to me. With that said, I'm gonna show you how to purge the fuel pressure from your J1850 bikes. Let's get started. All right, now we need to go on to relieving the pressure in this tank. All right, so once you got your bag off and you got your side cover off, we need to find the fuse box. The fuse box is right here, unclip it. So if you're looking on this diagram, it's right there. Fourth one down on the left, that's your fuel pump. Okay, so we can hear that the, the fuel pump pressured up. You want the bike to start so you can relieve all the pressure. Pull those fuse. And there we go. All the fuel pressure should be out of the fuel pump at the quick connect. Quick connect on these bikes is right here. All right, so once you've gotten all the pressure out, you still have a little bit of leakage, but all you're gonna do is push up on this a little bit, push up on this sleeve, and gently pull it out. Right here looks fine. We'll make sure now, when we reconnect this tank, double check that this is not leaking. If it's leaking, we're gonna have to replace the O-ring inside here. It's not fun, but it can be done. Okay, to get this off, this one here is a 3 8 so I've already removed it. Oh, let's move on to this one. You're gonna wanna turn this switch and use a 5 30 seconds ball allen. If you have a street glide, it's gonna be a little bit different. One of these is gonna be for the CB, and one of them is gonna be for the fuel pump. On a street glide, you'll just have one for the fuel pump. You'll have the vent tube here, and then you'll also have a drain. And on here, you're gonna to wanna to unlock your gas cap first. Unscrew the gas cap. This is gonna be stuck down, so try not to wiggle it around. On here, there's gonna be some tabs. You can just bend these tabs a little bit to get the wires and vents out of here. Okay, now this CB, if it was an issue, you could undo this CB right here. I don't see why I need to. I'm just gonna lay it back in a different area. Here is the vent. Unplug your vent. Unplug your fuel pump. Notice the routing goes through here. That'll come into play when you're running it because you're only having a certain amount and you don't want it interfering with the dash sliding over. Pull that back out of the way. All right, so now that we got the dash off, everything's disconnected. Now we realize that the customer screwed us. Whether intentionally or not, it's a common occurrence. It happens. People forget this fuel tank is probably about this full right now, so I'm going to have to empty this tank. Okay, so this little piece can be removed here and set aside somewhere not on a painted surface. Then we need to remove these two bolts and there's two bolts up front. These are half inch. All right, so on here, there's gonna be these rubber covers. You just pull that rubber cover off and it's gonna expose the same size bolt that we had before, half inch. And there's gonna be one on this side and one on the other side as well. A word of caution. If you have no way to empty this tank besides dumping the tank out into a separate container. Be care if you want to keep this tank nice and you're not replacing it because it's damaged. You need to be careful. These full tanks are heavy because not only are you having the, what is it, eight pounds a gallon or 10 pounds a gallon of fuel, but you also have the weight of the tank. So just be careful. I'd like to get this up in the front first and then reach back here to this tank pick it up all right so the tank is off if you're a cleaning kind of guy here's the here's access to the top of your valve covers if you do not have the special tool like i do not have a special tool it's an expensive specialty tool that does one thing you can and i have done this before i've taken a, a solid piece of wood like oak or something like that especially with it pointed like this take your hammer drive it sideways if you're doing it on the tank you're keeping this tank, you're just replacing the fuel filter in here, whatever you're going to do. Tape this off with painter's tape. Anywhere you might have something nearby, the wood, whatever. But we're not concerned about this tank, we will only be concerned about the new one. Make sure that this seal comes out in one piece. Okay, this piece here, after we get it up and out, is going to be tricky to get out. There's connectors, fuel line. So this is going to take some fiddling to get out of here. You want to try to get this piece out. Once that's out, then we need to remove these two connectors. Once we get these connectors off, then there's some connectors on the bottom side. It'll be easier once we can spin it around. And that clip came off. 
You don't want the quick ball in there. Generally they'll stay on, heard that little snap. That's these letting loose. Okay, don't worry about the lines into the tank. Okay, this one here, yeah, this one you need a screwdriver for to get in here to push this down. Then this, there's a connector right here. There's a little tab right here that needs to be pushed in so this can be pulled out. Then the top part's out. This is where your fuel pressure regulator is. So the next thing that needs to come out of here is your sending unit. The sending unit is down over here. There's a clip in here that you push up on and push it back. Now to get that sender out, you need to open this connector up and remove it. Now this sending unit will come out. This end out first. And there's your sender. Now it's the same thing for this. There's a clip actually on the back side you just push this forward this is where your fuel pump is there's a bunch of stuff to get out of here you probably want to disconnect this one this is just a return line it feels like it doesn't want to come out of here but it's heavy it's got a fuel pump in it all we have left is the quick disconnect all right so it's quick to Disconnect to get out of here is going to be a 7 8. You just want to make sure that the fuel line inside does not get caught up anywhere. Pull it straight out. All right, that's it for that. Now we just need to put all this stuff into the new tank. Okay, so when we start putting stuff back together, there's a certain order you want to do it in. Goes in first. There's little tabs in here. Right where my fingers at. So those slide in and then lock on. So that one locked down. You can double check it. Push down on the button and try moving it back and forth. Keep your wiring out. This here for the quick connect on the bottom. Next, in goes the the float. Give us a fuel level. Oop, here we go. Sorry guys, I can't get a better shot of this for you. You'll understand it as soon as you do it. You'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay. We got the, the float in there. Now this one here, if you can see it right there that I'm pointing to, that is the return to tank. And that is this hose here. Once you clip that on there, pull it. Make sure that it's on there nice and tight and visually inspect it as well. Take your new or reused gasket. These little bumps on here are awesome because it holds the gasket in place. Remember, this is our fuel filter and our pressure regulator. How you always know, you never want to put unfiltered fuel into a pressure regulator or anything like that. You want to filter the fuel first and then regulate after okay that one's on now we can plug this back in this goes right here clip out push in double check fiddly getting it in here again like it was getting it out now we make sure that the gasket is sitting where it should this little tab lines up with there Everything is in and on. Now I just need to put the ring on. If you look at this ring, there should be a part of it that says top. Right there, it's kind of hard to read. Line it up. Okay, so the reason that I'm using this big a hammer is I want the force. And I want to be able to drive it on right away. Now this is all assembled, we can start to put it back on the bike. Little rubber mats, these are awesome if you have a metal bench like I do. I mean, they fit fuel tank just perfect and it'll help keeping it from getting scratched. Especially if you keep this clean and there's nothing on here. These are great. This is from Volpage. Okay, so I got the fuel tank back on. Don't start with these bolts, start with the ones up front. I already have this bolt in. Sometimes you need to lift up and move the tank around. Line it up right. Before you tighten anything up, get all your bolts in. Next, we can put this vent on, vent back on. This, remember, goes for the drain for this. This is for your fuel pump. The nice part about this wire is it's already kind of trained into its place. First, let's plug it in. 
and then tucks between here and here. Okay, so where this dash is gonna go, I don't have a whole lot of gloss cleaners around, but I do have this one. It's just a speed wipe from the chemical guys. I'm just gonna wipe this down to get any of the dirt off when we put the dash on, so we're not scratching the tank. I'm gonna wipe the rubber off. CB goes in this side with this, with this one. Okay, now the first one we're gonna put in because it will not move or adjust is the one in the front. Next, this. Besides the plastic piece that I forgot to put on here, they pulled off a speed nut. Now here's that speed nut. These, these sellers don't include anything when they give you a tank. Take the speed nut off and everything. Gotta make every freaking cent. Dash is on, secure. Need to fill it with fuel. I would hope that I do not have to state the obvious. Do not turn on this bike until you have fuel in the tank. Okay, so we've checked for leaks. There's no leaks. Now we need to check for leaks when we pressure the system on. Turn it on. That's the sound of a healthy fuel pump. All right, so now that's done, we can finish reassembling the bike. Thanks for watching. And remember, if V-Twinkie, we build it to ride.